we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling on that one. Now let me start. And scene. And scene. What have we learned? <laughs> what have we learned? Okay, and now we're rolling on audio. All the lights are set up. You can see us even though it's darker earlier. Right, it's darker earlier. Having these two lights is like... I feel like it's a spotlight, like really important. Yes, That's absolutely. Like. All the paparazzi are out today. Everybody. Right? Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome back everybody. Yes. To uh, Coffee Talk. <laughs> wine Talk. Instead of coffee, we have wine. Wine Talk. It's Wine Talk. <laughs> um, man, what a week it's been. It's been a week. It's been a week. Not to go into detail, but it's been a week and it's only been two, two days, two or three days. Those four days. It's, it's been four days? Oh my we're, we're, god, it is yeah, Thursday. So tomorrow it will be, this will be posted. Or no, the um, nice. we're we're a week ahead, okay. so next right. week this will be. But so hopefully by next week things have calmed down. Yes. Holy cow, it's been. It's been a lot. Mind. I I know for me, I'm really excited about this morning, which I was not excited about because it was moving, and who's excited about that? Right. But I got all of my furniture, everything out of my office that I've been paying for since March 2020 and have not have stepped foot in twice. And when, the second time was to get the stuff out of there. And so I got everything out of there. I turned in my key and only one more month to pay on an office that I never use. And I got some fun pieces from my office that look lovely yeah. in my apartment, so it made me very happy. I love, yeah, the chairs look nice, everything, yeah. all the accoutrements look really yeah, nice. Yeah, little knickknacks, little fun stuff that I, that I was like, oh, I forgot how cute my office is. Yeah. And that's, like, I'm, I'm sure I have so many subscriptions out there that auto-renew that I have no idea, and it's like slowly draining my bank account, so yeah. I get it where it's like, I'm not using this thing, I'm gonna move out. Yes, we're definitely moved out. Yeah. So that feels really good. That must be a big weight off here. Yes, it's a financial weight. It just was bothering me that all the stuff was in there and getting it out of there and being done because I'm done. Yeah. And I don't know what the office situation will look like moving forward. I haven't decided yet or figured it out. Do you need one? It's, I don't know. I don't know what my profession's going to look like anymore. The majority of people really, that I talk to are really comfortable and like telehealth. So I don't know what the demand is going to be for in person when this all shakes out. Yeah. And so I don't want to make any quick moves of paying for another office until I kind of see. Yeah. There's no rush though, right? You can't. You don't need. No. There's no rush. I just. Uh, I think it just has to. It, we're in uncertainty. We've been in uncertainty for almost. Get, we're getting on two years now. So I just need to see a little bit more. Do a little bit more investing, assessing, I guess, of what what is it? What is the majority out there doing? Don't follow anybody else. No, make your own. I will. I'll make my own. Forge your own I path. I will. Um, also, uh, quick aside, are you using a, a framed piece of artwork as a giant coaster for your drinks? <laughs> yes. All right. I, I, don't, people... I, I don't want y'all to know, but I, I needed it to be right here, and I thought that picture that came out of my office looks like it would be just fine to sturdily hold. But if you hear something crash, shatter. Yeah. I'm very clumsy. I wouldn't be surprised if I could well, knock. So I'm going to be very careful. Fingers crossed. Yes. That, that does not happen. That's, that's creative. It is creative. I mean, it looks interesting. You might be starting a new design trend of oh, using yeah. framed pieces of artwork yeah. as a giant <laughs> serving tray. Hey, it's Thursday night in Philly. What are you going to do? Behind the scenes of our recording. So there's Behind all kinds of contraptions making this wonderfulness happen. Man, if, if you watch us on YouTube, you'll be able to see. Maybe we'll do a, an inside the show after this and we'll show everybody the giant <laughs> plate. Um, so you had the idea you for the question today. Yes. So why don't you tee it up so we can knock it out of the park. But it comes from many conversations with clients and some personally as well, and my own personal experience. Um, what, how did we even frame it? You said it so beautifully earlier. <laughs> it's, it's really pretty simple, but you ma said it Making well. friends as an adult. Yeah, how do you make friends as an adult and no one prepares you for this? Nobody. It was, I mean, it wasn't easy for me as a kid to begin with because I was a big hunk and nerd in, in grade school. Like I, I had uh, like I had one 
good friend in grade school and we kind of had each other's backs going through but I let me tell you I was I was not a popular person <laughs> in grade school high school was a little better I found I found my my group my artsy group and then college I went to art school and that's when I really blossomed oh but then I was a late bloomer but then after that you're right like as an adult it's hard to it's not as easy or convenient mm -hmm. as it is when we're in school to make friends. Well, yeah, I mean, some people obviously had it much more difficult than others, but the the thing that's different is that the the, the peers are there. They're there. They're they're around you. Some people it was easier than others. Some people were more popular. Some people had horrible experiences and unfortunately were bullied. But there's. People are there that are your age. I know I'm simplifying it a lot. I don't think so. But I, I think the minute you get out of school, how do I do this? And where do I find these people? And how do I make a friend? How do we yeah. like walk up to someone and be like, will you be my friend? Check yes or no in the box on this paper. <laughs> like, <laughs> will you go to the homecoming dance? Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, there aren't those anymore because I'm now an adult. Right. Hey, maybe we could start something. Adult homecoming oh parties. Oh my god, I would totally do that. I would percent. I would do that in a heartbeat. Anyone that's interested in this, please email please. us and hey, let me ask you something. Especially if you're a email. venture capitalist and have some moolah, <laughs> like you want to invest in some adult yes. prom parties. That would be so fun. Um, whatever happened to? Remember that there was like, for a hot second, a few years ago, there were cuddle parties. I'm not privy to the cuddle party. That That's what everybody, cool. everybody tenses up when I say that. But it was a thing. Like, it was on the news. People were having cuddle parties because they, like, they wanted more um, platonic, friendly, like, physical interaction with people that wasn't sexualized or anything. It was just, like, everybody come over, we'll just, like, wear comfortable clothes and we'll just cuddle for a little while. And it's, like... I didn't. I don't understand how, how it you got not be so. Sure, a creeper wouldn't be in the mix. Of course, <laughs> I think that's why they're not around anymore because there are too many freaking creepers. I mean, it's a it's a cute idea, and I think it speaks to. I think it actually is connected to what we're talking about tonight in terms of creating those intimate relationships as an adult. And I don't mean intimate like brown chicken, brown cow. I mean like. <laughs> I mean like friends that you can call and invite over and, and have a drink or, you know, go out to brunch or, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ruminate on this a little more. What do you think? I have thought lots about this and I think that, you know, for some people when they leave school, if they, if they go to school, um, or if they, if they didn't go to school and they stay in their area, they may, it kind of depends on where you live and what your experience has been. Um, so this may not apply to everyone, but if, let's say somebody goes away to college and then they graduate. Well, then you may or may not stay in that area and your friends may all stay in that area, but it's very more, much more likely that you guys could be spread out, especially if you're from a different state or city originally anyway, or you get a job offer in a new city and those relationships can be difficult to keep, especially the way they were when you were in school together and all the time saw each other. And then you're like, I don't have anyone to go out with or anything to do with if you're somebody that's really young too that might go out a lot. Um, and I think that also it happens, if that doesn't happen and you happen to be lucky enough that you can stay, your, your friend group all stays local, where whatever the case may be, that the other part of this is life stages, right? So eventually a lot of times, I mean it's changing, but as people get into their late 20s or 30s, they may start to get into more serious relationships and get married. And then their entire life is different. And then they have children. And if you are one of those people that ha is, has not found your person yet at that time, or doesn't want to get married, or whatever the case may be, then everyone around you could, it can feel like is moving on. Your friend group is all at a different stage than you are, and it can feel very lonely and it also, if you are someone who really wants that, it can put so much more pressure on what's wrong with me and why haven't I found my person and why am I not in this stage yet? Yeah. Is it, I mean, I think I already know the answer to this, but 
is it because we're forced to be in this same space with all these other people and we're just like ha we just make friends because like you said we're all in each other's faces all the time like in high school and in college and like we have to return to the same building all the time and we live in the same dorm or we live or in the same apartment complex and it's like there's a there's a term for that and i can't think of it like i don't know that term oh god from uh not familiarity breeds contempt because that's that's another one that's another podcast episode uh like you're, you're around somebody so much you just it just like yeah, you're just you're just friends, friends. like it just happens yeah. yeah um and maybe it's because i mean this popped into my head that once you get through schooling and you're like an adult and they release you into the wild and don't prepare you and don't prepare you. well but don't prepare you in the soft skills that no, we're we're that I'm referencing right yeah, that we're, referencing. we're steeped in i think is there a little bit of refractory time where you're like i just need to chill by myself i'm like good i don't have to go to school i don't have to go to class anymore it's like i can just find a place and like be one myself <laughs> sure there might be. it depends on the, on that person's personality too yeah. You know, for some people or an extrovert, being around people all the time was energizing, but for an introvert, it might have been more challenging. Or for someone with social anxiety, it's super challenging when they get their own space and they're alone, they're like, oh gosh, now I can breathe. Right. You know, absolutely. I think, though, that over time, it can become difficult. And, and I just, you know, this doesn't happen for everyone. I know I'm speaking, I just I really don't mean to generalize. I think for some people, they will go to school or get a job and stay exactly where they did their whole life and they will have those friendships from high school all the way through. And this, what we're talking about, would seem foreign to them. But I also think that, at least for me, I can say my experience, I have very few people that I'm still friends with from high school and college. Very few, actually. Me too. Like, a couple. Yeah. From college, really just my best friend. So, um... So it kind of goes back to familiarity, whatever you were just talking about. I, there's a term for it. I will remember it at five o'clock in the morning. I'll bolt upright and be like, oh, that's what it was. I can't Yeah, stop but I that. also think that it's the stage that you're in in your life. I am an extremely different person than I was an undergraduate and even graduate. I am very, very different. So those relationships I made then might have been, not been the familiarity thing you can't think of, but might have just been... <laughs> Connecting on a um, in a way that, that at that time in my life we connected for X Y Z reason, but I really think when I look back at who I am now and the friends I had and just the types of schools that I went to, I don't know that I would connect with those same people now. So there's that too. Yeah. We just change and evolve when we enter adulthood. For a lot of people, there's a lot of change that goes on, particularly for a lot of people in their twenties. Yeah. And sometimes 30s. And sometimes and I mean, even 40s for some. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and us being in our 40s, I think, you know, college was 20 years ago. Many moons. Over 20 years ago. Man. If we didn't change, then right. that'd be a little alarming. Right? Yeah. Um, and I think, you're right, it's also, I think, the kind of environment, especially, I'm just thinking of college now, because that's like the last... For some, that's like the last gasp of scholastic, you know, right. before you jump out in the real world. I think it depends on the kind of environment your college was. Like, there's much more studious environments. There's much more laid back environments. I went to art school, so it was much more like, <laughs> come to class and whatever you pick up off your floor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, so, and I think that, that may lead into or, or affect how easy you find it to make friends moving forward? I don't know. Does that, could that like train you in th those last four years, whether it's high school or college for whoever, you know, wherever your journey takes you, your scholastic journey, is that like a training ground for how we make friends in the future? That's a good question. Thank That's you. That's a good question. Thank you. Um, I think... <laughs> good question. Um, yeah, I think you, meet, you, you learn the basic rules, yes. I, I think, of course, it's your, it's your uh, training. I do think it is, in a way, of, of how to be in a relationship. 
in general. Ooh. And but I think it's that initial connect that gets really tough when you're an adult in the adult world and you know you need no, more friends and you don't know how to go about making them. What is that? Because now since we've since we've started recording, I've I've been there's a part of my brain that's like been movie reeling through. I don't think I have that much difficulty meeting new people. Like I think I think there's there's like a gradient on the spectrum that we're talking about of making friends as an adult. <clears throat> I don't picture myself as having problems meeting new people and getting along with them. Um, like acquaintances, mm -hmm. you know, like oh, I can, you know, talk, I can, I, I think I can pretty much talk to anybody, <laughs> I think. Um, but I think it's moving people along that spectrum of just to like, oh, I met you once or twice. Now you're an acquaintance. Now you're like, we hang out a lot now. Oh, now you're a friend. Right. And it's also that maybe you do meet people, you meet people at work or whatever. And how do you make that leap from um, seeing, let's just go to the office, seeing sure. so-and-so that you chit chat with on a regular basis at work and you really think you like this person, you want to spend time with them. How do you take that step? Yeah. It's uncomfortable for a lot of people because you don't want to misread, like, does this person just want to be my friend at work? Yeah. Or are they feeling like we could have a really great time outside of here? Because that would, if you really think you might want to befriend this person and spend more time with them, then step getting outside of the office and do it, go to the movies, go to a game, that would, could be a way to do that. But that's awkward for a lot of people especially with work because you don't want to, you don't want to like be weird or, 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 or like yeah. overstep. No. Yeah. And is work a continuation of that thing from school where it's like, Oh, we all have to go to the same building all the time. Now we're all forced together. We might as well be friends, but Oh, I have so many, you blew my mind. I have so many questions now. Just so oh, I'm so good at this. Um, you, you, but I think as we become more of an adult, I know that's terrible grammar, but like as we grow into ourselves as adults and mm -hmm. get more comfortable with ourselves and carry whatever neuroses we have and like become this person, does it get harder? You know, same, like say work is an extension of college of we all go to the same you know, building all the time, we all have the same homework, you know, whatever. As we get older, do we get more set in our ways? And that's what makes it harder to connect with other people on a friend level of like, I don't, it's not as much of a necessity for survival as it used to be. I think it depends on your situation. I think if you're in a relationship and you have a family, you may not feel it as much. But if you're if you're by yourself, I think you're gonna feel it stronger. And also that that just brought up a good point for in my brain of people who make their own families as they oh. get older because you know as part of the LGBTQ community, you know I know you kind of have your family, but then you have the family that you build along the oh, way. Absolutely. And there's, there's, you know, if that affects, uh, that affects it too. And I think for me, it was, it's part of why I'm, it's so easy for me to hang out with new people and, you know, make a, a beginning connection with them because that's, that was survival for me. That's what I had mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. of like building this group of, you know, this circle of support. Like I tell yeah. everybody to build your circle of support. So maybe that plays into how easy or hard it is for people to make friends, depending on what your circle of support was like in your formidable years. Mm -hmm. Did I hit on something? Yeah. I think that that, that makes a lot of sense actually too, that, for just, just I don't know if I'm going the right direction, but just how easy it, is it for you to talk to people and connect with people? 
Me, easy as pie. Love it, breathe it, can talk to anybody, and I have no problem, and I, I, I'm i lucky that way, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're that person, then some of these things are easier. I think it's much, much harder when you're somebody that has always struggled with that, or somebody that's got a lot of self-confidence you know, issues, or uh, somebody who um, it just hasn't had a good go with relationships. Maybe somebody who was bullied. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's a lot of factors as to what can get in the way or make it more difficult that have a lot to do with that person's experience and frankly that person's personality in some ways too. I've had to do this a lot in my life. I've had to because of the fact that I'm older in my 40s and I don't have a family and all of that or a partner at the moment. And I've had to make friends and make friends. I have my best friends, but I've had to do this a lot because people then move on or there's some distance because maybe they were in a different phase, maybe they're now married. It's not that we don't love each other. So I, that's why I feel strong about this topic as well is, is I know that I am so comfortable with that and that I'm so lucky that I'm so comfortable with that, but I recognize that that's not the case for a lot of people, but they might still really want that. Yeah. Just not know how to do it. What if? Oh my God! I um. I just got the image in my mind of um. The the monkey bars at the gym mm -hmm. at the at the gym. Well, no, I guess gyms have monkey. I don't know. I haven't been in a gym. <laughs> <laughs> as you can tell, if you're watching this on YouTube, as you can tell, I haven't been to. Um, at the playground, the the you, you swing from one bar to another. Yeah, they are, yeah. Cool. I got you. I got you, Bob. Follow, follow me. I just I'm explaining. Why do you want the monkey bars right now? I know you know who monkey bars are. Oh God. Um, I'm I'm making I'm trying to like work through the process in my brain of how I'm connecting it because I'm picturing somebody swinging from one bar to the other. Mm -hmm. What if we do that with friendship circles, as needed in our life? You know, because like you saying, and I have this too with friends that I know who have gotten married and have kids and they kind of, they peel off from that original friend circle, but then they have their other friends who are also going through what they're going, not going through. It's not like, <laughs> if they God, get married, it's suffering with a family right, now. Right, right. Uh, no, they're, they're, you know, now they're in a new phase of life where they have family and they have kids. And so they make friends with other people who are in a similar mm -hmm. circumstance. So maybe it's like those bars at the playground where you swing from one to the other depending on what kind of support you need yeah, in I that phase that. of your life. I love the monkey bars. Man! God, now my head ex is right. exploding. Right, we're making each other's heads my explode. Gosh. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think, you know, look, like I keep saying, and I'm, I'm done saying it, this is my last time, <laughs> that I think for some people this is just not a thing. But I do think I've had this conversation so with many, many people where it is, and people are feeling very lost and very alone, and and then there's the whole everybody else is doing and I'm not piece, which really makes it hard when when your friend group is all in one space. Maybe that's when you want to be, and maybe it's not, and you're not in it. So maybe following this train of thought that we both just jumped on. It, it, I'm getting the sense that the others of like, I've missed something or like I'm alone because all these other people are doing something. All those other things that people are doing are very communal. Getting married, raising a family. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you have all these other people who want to share in that of like this is a joyous thing. You know, where mm -hmm. I'm going through the same. What are you naming your kid? Great! Oh my god! And the people who feel alone or like left behind, the people that are in that on that specific bar on the you know on the monkey bars on the playground. That's not a very communal thing. That's a very isolated yes. thing. And you don't you don't want to reach out and say, Hey, I feel alone. How about you? You know? Right. I would be that person, like, everybody else is freaking married. How about all right, let's go get a drink, you know? That's exactly what I was thinking, is is that then what I think is most helpful is for them to find 
other people that are on the same bar. Yes. But that can be tough too. It's like, okay, so how do we do that? I was just having this conversation with somebody. And so what do, you know, and you can talk about different activities that you can get involved in. And um, I'm always a big fan of the meetup groups. Yeah. Because it's the meetup for everything. And if you don't have anything else in common, you have that interest that you signed up about to mm-hmm. do. Um, I was speaking to somebody about their church and um, there's somebody that's going through exactly what we're talking about. And they, I was like, oh, wow, because they really want to continue to get connected to their church more. And I was like, are there groups at your church or volunteering opportunities? And we we're just talking about how that might be a really great way for you to do two things. Get better, more involved in church and make some new connects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the meetups are... They're still going to be awkward for people because it's like, oh, now I got to go, you know, it's that, it's that forcing you to be like, oh, I got to go to this thing and meet all these weird people. I wish there was a more, I don't know, I don't know if there is a more subtle way to do that. Well, I don't know that everybody that's at a meetup necessarily wants to find their BFF. I think that some people might, might be totally fine with, with, Maybe they're, you know, I don't know. They could just want to do the thing and have no one to do it with. And they might be fine at the fact that they don't have anyone to do it with, but they want to do that thing. Right. So I don't know if it's everybody. Right. Because, I mean, I, I, I joined the meetup when I started tennis. That's how I started playing tennis again. I went to a meetup group, Sunday Fun Day. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't necessarily trying to make friends at all. I really just wanted to play tennis. See, that's the important thing. Your yeah. expectations. Right. Yeah. My my coach brain kicked in because I was like, I I used this this imagery with somebody I was talking to this week, and they're like, oh my god, you're spot on. You know, a lot of times we want to shove the whole pie in our mouth because mm-hmm. it's so delicious, mm-hmm. but you that's not you're not going to be able to eat it that way. It's one slice at a time, one yeah. little bite at a time. Yeah. So finding something, and for me, what popped into my head was I have <clears throat> an application to become a member of the Philadelphia Museum of Art on my uh, kitchen table and it's been sitting there staring at me for months because it's, I'm like, I really want to do it, but I like forget about it or I didn't have the money and I'm like, I'm busy. I would, I want to do that because that's a really fun day for me. Like a a Saturday of like, I'm a member of the Museum of Art. I'm just going to go and like pick the Greek wing and like walk around and look at like really wonderful stuff or Am I going to meet people? No. Am I going to like party and have have a good time? And like, no, I'm just going because it's an interest of mine. Like you said with tennis, I'm just going to go and do it. And added bonus, if I meet somebody, we already have this thing in common. Right. Right. And that's the way I frame it to people. By the way, don't invite me to the museum. I'm like a toddler at a museum. What? I have a problem. What? I get very bored very quickly and I'm like a small child. Oh, I need to leave. really? Yeah, it's really not something I'm proud oh. of, but I'm sharing it anyway. What, what was, would there be anything, any exhibit that you would be like, all right, I'll, I can focus for 10 minutes on this? The Mudders Museum. Cause it has With all a mooder. Yeah, all those crazy, like, weird things in there that could keep my attention for a good half. That's another one I've never been to. Oh, you should go to Mudders yeah. Museums in Philadelphia and check it out if you've never heard of it. It's pretty cool. There is an umlaut over the U, so it's Mooder. I've been, I've been. Oh, am I saying it wrong? I've been corrected so oh. many times. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's okay. I, I was too, and I always, I slip uh, as well. Um, but please, if you're, if you're not in Philadelphia and you ha- have no idea what we're Recall talking about, visit. look it up. It's M U T T E R, and it's in Philadelphia. It is a, it's a part of the, um, physicians college or like yes. something. I, I, I live here and I have no idea, but it's like a museum of. Genetic embryo. Medical embryo. oddities. Yeah. And like, like they have weird I'm skeletons guys. and like, yeah, it's it's a really interesting place to go if that's something that interests you. So I'll, I'll put it in the show notes of uh, a link to the Mütter, um Museum. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. We digress. But I, I think you're right, absolutely right. And I'm glad you brought up this point because I do speak, when I bring up Meetup, I do kind of go exactly where you just went of managing like... The last thing you want is to start putting a ton of pressure on yourself for something like that. That's what I think it's good, is that if you just know you want to do the thing, and you go do the thing, whatever it is, then 
like you said, if you meet someone great and you connect with them, great. If you don't, you went and did something you liked and then you do something else later. But if you go in there thinking, I have to connect with someone, I have to make a friend. If I don't, I'm a loser, no one likes me, I'm alone. Mm -hmm. You do all that, don't go at all. Just don't even go right. if you're gonna do that because it's just gonna make it worse. And that um, builds into be self-care. Yep. Everything always comes back. It always comes self -care. circle back around. Um, because if you're doing something for you, that's awesome. Because you're building your self-esteem, you're building your self-awareness, healthy boundaries, all this, all this good stuff. Of I'll just take the example of going to the museum. Of I'm going to the museum because I'm going to the museum. It's something I'm interested in. I could spend a whole day there just mm -hmm. walking around looking at stuff. I really enjoy it. It's enriching to me. Mm -hmm. Nobody else has to be there. I could be there by myself and I would have a grand old time. Mm -hmm. And when I leave, I will feel good because I did something that feeds my soul. Yes. And like same thing with tennis. Even if you didn't meet anyone, you still play tennis, you still had fun, you leave happy, you fed your soul, your resiliency is up. Like. That's the important thing. No matter what it is, whatever meetup it is, or like, not even meetup. I mean, meetup's a good thing, but it has that expectation of, oh, now I have to go see other people and like interact with people. Yeah, I think when you enter, enter it with that, you're just, it's not gonna go well. And right. it's gonna become like so much pressure. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine that um, moved here. Oh, well, we've been friends for like 10 years, so she moved here like 11 years ago. But when she came here, she did a ton of meetups. She was going to meetups for everything. And that is ultimately, number one, she had a lot of fun. Number two, that's how she ended up building her, her relationships. But it took time. It wasn't like every single time she went to something, she made a new friend. It was just, she was very active in it. She's kind of the one person that, that got me like thinking about meetup and seeing what it could do for someone who was moving to a new city. And, you know, again, she's comfortable meeting new people. So for those of you out there that aren't, I, I get what I'm saying. I'm making it sound really easy. But it was a really great to watch, and it was really worked well for her. Yeah, and the pressure part of it is, is for me, the big thing, because that's what turns a lot of people off for stuff. Like, too much pressure, I'm out. I'm already out before I even began. Mm -hmm. Take that pressure off yourself. Do If meetup is too much... Like, what your friend did was great, especially for a very gregarious, outgoing person. If you move to a new city, yeah, yeah. and do all these yeah. meetups, this is fun, because mm -hmm. that's what feeds her engine, yep. is I'm gonna go to all these new interesting things. Right. If you're not so outgoing, but you still have like one or two interests, like, uh, just another case in point from Philadelphia, I like playing board games. If that's Me one too. of your Why things. Why am I doing that? Right? Oh, oh my God, when's board game? <gasps> uh, Forever. Uh, Taboo and I are best friends. Ooh. I love Taboo all day long and Pictionary. I'm old school a little bit. Ooh, oh, I have some new games. All right, let Dan know we're setting right, it up. All right, we're gonna we're gonna set okay, this up. Okay, sorry everyone. Sorry, we're everybody. planning our social sorry, activities guys. now. Sorry, um, I, say your interest is playing board games. Like, literally, there is an interest for everything out there. Oh, so if your yeah. interest is as simple as I like playing board games. In Philly, there is a meetup for people who 100%. like to play board games. They meet at the bottle shop down the street from me, like once a month or whatever. People just get together and play board games. Everything. You collect coins. You like rocks. Collect coins. I swear to God, there's a group You like rock everything. tumbling. <laughs> I follow somebody on TikTok who tumbles rocks. Very soothing. And I like seeing the outcome. Okay. You know? Okay. So there's literally something for everybody. And I'm sure there's, a, there's some... Like, it doesn't even have to be a meetup. Find your interest. If you're if you're very introverted and meetup is too much, but you still like playing board games, do a Google search in your city of like places I can go and play board games. Yeah, there's a place actually in this neighborhood. Yeah. I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Um, where it's all board games. There's like three, 300, 500 board games. Yeah. And people go in there and you can like get some food and stuff and you can just sit and play board games. Now, I think most people for that go in with, with somebody. But I wouldn't be surprised if they had something that you could go you can in. Play, play solitaire, mm -hmm. like bring a deck of cards. You know, it's there's something for everybody, and look look within. I think is the big thing. Yeah. Like, if you have an interest that you like, go do that thing: tennis, art museum, board games, the motor, whatever. You know, if if it's a thing, 
go in without the expectation or the added pressure of, oh, I need, I need to. Listen to the words. Mm -hmm. I need to meet people. I'm doing this because I have to. No, go and just say, I want to. I get to go to the museum and look at art, and I don't have to meet anybody. It's the same thing with a dating relationship, right? Yeah. If you go out to, I don't know, a bar or wherever people do, do this. <laughs> at a bar or wherever you go, the grocery store. Wherever people are meeting people, meeting these meeting people days. And you're like, I have to meet someone. And, you know, I, I must... No, just go do whatever that thing is where it's potential to meet a partner and enjoy yourself. Like, if you're too focused in and I must meet someone, then it's, um, it's likely that the whole night could go south and then you can walk away feeling bad. So it's all how you frame it and your expectations when you're trying to put yourself in situations to connect with people. Right. It's the... I'm being careful with my, my word choice right now. Sometimes there is a, a desperation, mm -hmm. and I, I mean that in the nicest way. I don't mean it negatively, but sometimes I felt it myself. Everybody feels it where you're like, oh, I really need to do this thing because I feel like I have to do this to like achieve something. And it's, there's this desperation that happens. It's not, it's not conducive to getting you to your goal. Mm -hmm. I think that desperation is a little too wildly grabbing at things. Whereas if you just step back and, um, and, and I'm actually reading a book right now called Chatter and I just got to the chapter where the, the author talks about this of people feel less pressure and less negativity and are more likely to feel better about what they're doing when you have some distance between you and what's happening. Mm -hmm. And the, he says like, calling yourself by your name like for me it, instead of saying oh gosh i'm you know i'm going to the the art museum and i'm so nervous because i'm gonna you know have to meet people or walk around in public right. saying like ralph's going to the art museum oh ralph is ralph is gonna have a good time at the art museum ralph's just gonna children's look at book. right i love it right it's just, well i think it's along the same lines of like if you have that kind of separation from from immersing yourself in the eye and like the pressure of it that can also take some pressure off like ralph's gonna go play tennis and have a good time and ralph doesn't care if he meets anybody yeah i like how we went this direction because we're talking so much about making friends and how it can be hard but i'm glad we went here because i think it's very important to stress that if you make this decision to try to do this or you're feeling very lonely or isolated that you really check this part before you start trying things because the there is no major lose if you go enjoy something whatever it is and you don't connect with someone but there can be a major lose if you go in there with all these expectations and pressures on yourself and then things don't work out the way you anticipated you know you go and you enjoyed something okay maybe you didn't make a friend but you have a nice day you're nowhere, you're not worse off than you were before. What would you be doing instead? Being inside and possibly thinking about the fact that you don't want to do anything with. Plus, it's also good for building that relationship with yourself, which is critical to any healthy relationship you're going to have with someone else. Absolutely. And it's um, sphere of influence, too. Uh, plays into this a little bit of if I'm going to the art museum or you're going to play tennis, what is in my control? Mm -hmm. what, it, what am I actually, by the end of the day, when I leave that thing, what can I control? Mm -hmm. I can control, I'm going to the art museum, I'm going to look at art, and I'm going to enjoy myself. Like, mm -hmm. Those are the right. things that you have control over. Right. Making a friend, like connecting with somebody, that's really not within your sphere of control. What, what I've noticed is that some people feel like they are a loser or viewed as a loser by going and doing these things by themselves. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that there's some, they're, they're, they're viewed as defective or I've just heard people say loser a lot uh, or something's wrong with them, whatever way you want to put it. Sorry, I was just looking at something on the floor over there. It looks like there's a pretzel on the floor or something. Oh, is it? Okay, never mind. Sorry, sorry everyone. It's a rubber band. Sorry, it's a rubber band. It's a rubber band. It's fine. Okay. just for the YouTube people. Oh, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I think then that that that's a that's a I think a self esteem and a comparing yourself to others thing. But I think that that's another big piece that gets in the way for people and creating these narratives that there's no evidence of and very likely is are untrue. But when they feel really real to people, it that makes it really hard to do exactly what you're saying. I, I feel like everything just goes full circle back to self esteem. All the Absolutely. Time. Just, and also that thing about and what pops into my head is people go to see movies by themselves. Right, which is, which is looking at them thinking they're, I don't know who that is. I'm going to say this loud for the people in the back. <laughs> Screw all those people. I don't care what you think about me. Like, I, if I want to go see a movie by myself because that's where I'm at that day and I'm like, you know what would be fun if I went and saw this movie? Nobody else is around or can go with me. Great. I'm an adult. I'm going to go see a movie by myself and I'm going to have fun. If other people are looking at me like, oh, look at that weirdo seeing a movie by himself. I could get. I couldn't give less of a crap about what you, because that's your baggage. Mm -hmm. That ain't my baggage. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you're if you're sitting there judging a stranger for what they're doing, and it's like innocuously. If I was like, I, I've had a fifty foot hat on or something, and I was like blocking people, then I, then I would then, be like, right. then I'm affecting then you. There's and a I lot would, of things. I'm right. <laughs> Where did you get a fifty foot hat? And how did you fit it into the <laughs> theater? But uh, you know. That if I'm not affecting your life in any substantial way and I'm keeping to myself and just watch and I'm enjoying myself, that's on you. If yeah. you if if my mere existence is causing you stress, that's your jam. That yeah. ain't my jam. No, it's and like jam. that anybody out there who is and I'm from a marginalized community knows exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Like if you just walk down the street and your existence is causing somebody stress, screw all those people. Like, that's their damage. Yep. That ain't your damage, yep. you know? And a lot of people have to deal with that on a constant basis, which is yeah. dumb. Yeah. That is really dumb. We got, we got deep there for a second. Yeah. Life just... Life, everything's very complicated. It's very you know, complicated. Sometimes it feels heavy. It is, but... I think what we hit on, which I think is important for all this about circling back to our original question of why is it so hard to make friends as an adult, I think it's because we put so much pressure on ourselves that, you know, the goal is to make friends. Mm -hmm. Yes, the far off, you know, vision, goal, mission, whatever it is, is I want to make more friends and have more people in my circle of support. But between here and there, the bridge that connects all that is I'm going to do stuff that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build my self-esteem, yep. build healthy boundaries. I'm going to go do stuff that I enjoy and I don't care who else is there. People pick up on that. Yep. Like, that attracts people. Exactly. Yeah. Like if I'm at a, if I'm in a, if I'm at the museum and I'm looking, you know, and I see somebody else by themselves and they're really into a, a work of art, like we may strike up a conversation. Oh, I really like this one too. What do you like? Oh, it's great. You know? You may find a friend, but that's an added, like, that's icing on the cake. That's not the cake. Like, I didn't go there for that. I went there because I just want to go and have fun. So looking at the, looking at the small steps towards making new friends, yeah. I think is the important yeah. thing. Yeah. And being able to appreciate each step. We, we always want, you know, we're all so impatient. We always want to get to the, to the, you know, finish line. Mm -hmm. And, um, it just doesn't work that way with like most things. And right. so it's really hard. And I'm the least patient person you ever met in your life. My, my One of my best friends calls me the patience of a gnat. <laughs> yeah. So that's to give you a little insight. She's right. I'm working on it. I've been working on it, but I'm still not patient. Yeah. But, I, you know, I think with the process of change, whatever it might be, it requires patience whether we like it or not. Absolutely. Look so that is Great. I'm sorry. I impressed myself. You did. I impressed <laughs> me too. It's great. Um, so I think, um, in conclusion, um, if you're an adult and you're you feel a little awkward and you want to make friends but you don't know how to go about it and like why is this so hard? But this is this is a place where you can be a little selfish about it. Like focus on, I just want to do something that I enjoy. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have fun. That's the best way. That's the first best step towards making a new yeah. circle of friends is to just do find things you enjoy and just do them. And you'll find other people. And you'll there find other people that enjoy those things most likely, and 
you might have a five minute conversation with them or you might end up connecting and develop a, a relationship. Absolutely. Who knows? There you oh, go. Wow. I mean, oof. Wow. This was a, <sighs> this was a big one. This was good. This was good. I like this. Um, I'm so glad you're my friend. Oh, I'm so glad you're my friend. This is nice. Oh, <laughs> we had a moment. This is good. Uh, all of our contact information is in the show notes. So if you would like to continue this conversation with us uh, together or individually, you can find our respective websites in the show notes. I will put uh, links to the show notes for the Mooder and probably the Museum of Art as or well, just up. in case and meet up and what else did we talk about there was something else oh chatter i want to put that because i mentioned the book and it's a good book um about self-talk uh that's it yeah yeah i think we we we, we yeah we covered I don't everything know what to say. I, I think i'm out of words which is very unusual we're out of words we've I, used this all this is of a our, very rare moment but i think very, it is happening all right well before we <laughs> before we go into the red on our word count for today in our word bank um thanks everybody for joining us for another episode of Hey, Let Me Ask You Something. And uh, see you next time. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Here we go. I think we killed it again. I think we killed it. Awesome. Oh, and for the YouTube people, because we didn't do this, can we show the, can we show that? Right now? Wait, are we still recording? Yeah. Oh, all right. Because I'm going to put this on YouTube. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I just want it's a little extra bonus for people who stick around and watch the video and that don't this is this is the it's beautiful lovely, beautiful it? work of art that she was putting her drinks on as a serving tray. It worked. Yeah. I did not spill anything. It worked, but it's also gorgeous. So yeah, I really loved it actually. Yeah. So I, um, I like this stuff for my office. Yeah. But it, I mean everything I, worked out. It was great look, it was creative. Right. All right. That's what we're doing. All right. See you next time, everybody. Bye. Bye.